like to thank the Cuba Majig Series 2 Kickstarter for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something just a bit different. I want to highlight one of the archetypes in AFR Limited. I actually had a chance to draft this the other night and I had a ton of fun. So I'm not gonna post the full video because I just wanna show you guys what this deck is capable of so that way you guys can get out there and draft it yourself. Okay, not in love with really any of these cards. Titch Willow's a fun deck. Drop, and I like Death Priest a bunch. Jin. I feel like Death Priest is where I want to be. I would take like a better removal spell over it, but I don't know if I would take drop over it. Hmm. Let's try it. I like this card a fair amount. I'd like to avoid goblins, uh, or I'd like to avoid blue if at all possible, just because we've drafted a lot of blue. Haven't done much black-white. Maybe a blade of armor or a swarming goblins. Swarming goblins are fine. I think the better cards are like Jin Windseeker, Windseer, and even Scion. But we've drafted so much blue. We're trying to. Trying to mix it up content-wise. Even drop, I think, is good enough to just stay on target here. We haven't drafted a goblin deck. I don't know, I think drop might be good enough. I'd like to try to get into black-red. I don't think I've really drafted it much yet. It's never open. So... Unicorn deck is going to be probably wide open. Let's get, like... We're on the free-to-play account, so we don't care too much about, like, rare drafting or even winning. Oh, 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 come on! Let's go! Let's do it! Come on, come on, come on! Please! I haven't drafted this yet. Come on! Look, look, there it is! Let's do it! Come on! Give it to me! One time! Yes! Yes! Okay, okay, let's do it! We're doing it! Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we're gonna do it! Double price of loyalty already? Eek! Oh my god, oh my god, oh god. Come on, let's do it. I wanna draft it. I'm so sick of dying to this deck. I can't wait to kill people with it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hoarding Ogre overperforms. We needed a couple more sack outlets. And we die to it all the time. It's a very highly drafted deck. This used to be my like one of my favorite synergies in Limited, and I would always draft it even when it wasn't that good. Like when we when we had a witches, the witches cauldron back then, like core fourteen or something. That was just like my favorite thing to do to people. It this is the first set where it's like an actual freaking thing, which is nuts. But just take the uncommons for vault value. Okay, we got two Price of Loyalties and one Ghoul in pack one. I am feeling good. Feeling good about it. We're gonna get like two more Prices of Loyalty and just smush some people. Let's go. Or we'll just get land screwed for three games. Either way, it's fine. What's the worst that could happen? There's a ghoul, but do I think I, we probably take a magic missile over a, a first, a second ghoul, right? So we do need some good cards too, and I think these will come around enough to, we don't need more than three of them. Take a missile. Okay, come on. Ghoul and loyalty. Ghoul and loyalty. Ghoul and loyalty. I'm so mad. There are so many games where my opponents cast it on three and then cast it on four, and then I just am dead. Like, you can't come back from that. It's so absurd. But not today. Today, we're gonna smush them. We're gonna smush them good.
Teleportation Circle. That's another deck I have yet to draft, but I really, really want to. This is the Shambler Geist deck, right? Because we're going to be drafting as many of these ghouls as we can get. So this is the deck we want this in. Splash Teleportation. I don't think there's going to be a ton of ETB effects in these colors. I don't think Splashing Teleportation is really worth it. Oh, this thing has also smushed my face in several games and I've never really gotten to do it. Price of loyalty, number three. Oh my God, lots of ETBs. I mean, I don't have any really. We have swarming goblins, but I'm not really splashing it for that. Solid two drop or removal spell. I mean, I think price of loyalty is our removals, right? I think we just take the two drop. We just kill things with loyalties. We need more sack outlets. Goblins and vampires. I mean, yeah, right now it's like a one, it's like a two card combo that's pretty medium. What if this is dead or what if we don't see this? It seems not very good. Okay. Normally I would snap this battle cry goblin, but, but. We are halfway through pack two and we only have one sack outlet, but three prices of loyalties. So if we don't want these prices of loyalties to be dead in the water, we need this ghoul. Sad about it, but that's okay. I like a fang blade. I also realized I'm on the wrong side of the screen for this. My bad. Eve's tools over a second manticore, probably. My four drop slot is okay-ish. Honestly, I could play any of these cards. I changed my mind to get the four drop at the last second, but it was too late. Take the uncommon for vault value. Manticore, soul knife spy still being in there is interesting. Treasure possibilities. Hey, this three drop's actually not bad. I like that card. Red is open, feels pretty good. I would like... The three drop sack outlet. Okay, so there's no red and there is no black in this pack. Feign Death is kind of fine-ish. I don't love it. Free to play account, we don't really care about this. We could take just the beating four drop here, the Iron Golem. Which, you know, if we're stealing their stuff and hitting them with it, it could be pretty powerful. Speed Boots is okay. I'm not really like in love with any of these things, to be honest. Maybe one feign death combat trick makes the cut. Okay. Probably play the tiger tribe hunter. I think that card is fine. We don't really need more of these. I wouldn't, I would probably play a second hoarding ogre, but we just don't have much of a top end, so. Okay, second Hoarding Ogre. I need one more Sack Outlet. And one more Price. And then we can die happy. Yeah, Deadly Dispute would be, would be fine pick up here at this point too. Mind Sorcerer. Okay, four prices of loyalty. Whew. It's okay. We're gonna find one more sack outlet. I could feel it in my jellies. I, fi I feel it in my jellies. This is how they always cast three of these on us. Ooh, 
Oh, oh, these are all good. Well, we've got a lot of two drops, I think. We have the ghouls, the battle cries. We don't need the goblin. I like this card for carded, card draw. And maybe the removal is less important with the, with the loyalty, but normally I would say we need this, but I would rather take this and get some card draw. I feel like removal is a little less important in this deck. Sack outlet, come on! Price of loyalty, price of loyalty. Where are you? There it is, or deadly dispute, that's the one I meant. We have price of loyalty. Yes, we got what we wanted even though we called the wrong thing. Hell yeah. And it gives us treasure tokens. Beautiful. Beautiful. I will probably play both because we've got four. Hot damn. This is going to be so awful and silly. I don't even know. This is going to be interesting. We're not running more of these things. We're definitely in like open colors. Oh my gosh. Sack their thing, make a dude. Seems nuts. Oh my god. We don't need necessarily unexpected windfall if we're drawing stuff with the deadly disputes and uh, with the channeler, so that's probably a no-go. Bane, death is probably unnecessary. I think Geist is good with the double ghoul. I don't think it'll play well, especially with the Wanderer. This deck feels pretty good. All right, three cuts. Or, or, hear me out, we cut Eye of the Beholder and a land. We really only need to get to four. In best of one with hand smoothing, this might, if we cut Eye, this might be a 16 land deck. The only reason it might not be is with deadly dispute loyalty that sack outlet option is a little bit more but we get treasure tokens with thieves tools possibly with geist um you know ogres make treasures it's close but i still think it's possibly a 16 land deck 14 creatures we're a little light on creatures that maybe this is not quite good enough. We don't have enough go wide synergies except for this card and the Battlecry Goblin. So we're most likely making goblins with it because the Trumpet Blast will be pretty minimal with 14 creatures. Thieves Tools also makes treasures. I think it might be the Trumpet Blast option. Spike Trap is kind of medium, especially when we've got four loyalties and four sack outlets. So we're not likely to need the Spike Trap as much. Maybe it's Spike Trap. Hoarding Ogre, we're likely to be able to like play something, cast this after combat kind of thing. All right, well, I have no idea how this is gonna go. So let's hope it goes well. Fingers crossed. I apparently need to watch Detective Pikachu. Why? Gross. That's what Jelly's saying comes from? I'm not sure where I got it, to be honest. Maybe. I feel like this might get removed. I'll be sad about it. We lose all the desktop audio? Oh, we did. 
it looks like what I was worried would happen happened. Because I was thinking about dropping it and I chose not to. I should have attacked. They just have a bajillion things. Okay, well... Next turn, we've got an out. Oh, I thought there was going to be another fight spell there. Guess not. All right, let's hope this works. Fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's not as good as me doing it, but I still get my option. We're still going to get to attack here. They got a little bit more value than I would have liked. I just want to kill this and I'll be pretty happy about it this seems okay I'm very confused as to why they have my deck. And all my sacrifice outlets? It's very rude. to drop here. They can vault and get a bunch of card draw out of this and I don't want them to. Scry, please. I need good cards. Not lands. Uh, they have black. I mean, I don't know why we would. The discard spell is really not getting played a ton. Okay. Angry Candy, welcome to the channel. Okay. Come on, three lands in a row? just do this because if we do the one ones they don't get through whereas this gets through I wish I had cutthroat for the love of Jiminy Christmas oh oh 
Oh no! Oh no! So this is going poorly. This is going so poorly! Why sick four lands in a row? What's happening? You can sack a treasure? I could, but then if I draw a um Oh my god, did they just roll a one? <laughs> if we draw a price of loyalty. Then we have no sack outlet. Which we have three of them in the in the deck, so. I'd rather save it for that. Streamer with the top deck? I mean, three out of 22 cards or something. It's a lot. Seriously? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, well, there's only five more lands in the next 19 cards. This is a 16 land deck. We've drawn 11 lands. The good news is we have over a 10% chance to draw price. Hmm, that's not very good. There's two sack outlets and two prices in the deck. This deck of many things is messing me up. Oop. Okay. Wow, they're so close to dead too though. I want I think it's finally time to dispute this. See what we draw. Okay, so if we play a land, we can go here. We cast magic missile on this and this. Submit. Hasn't happened yet. They did draw two cards off of this. Actually.
We ended up almost using all of the treasures there, which is kind of crazy. And like I said, there's only five more lands in the top 15 cards, so doing okay-ish. It's a bit unfortunate. This trades against this, so I think I will not let them do the thing. So we got this, this will draw some cards. We auto pay here. We're still doing fine. Our opponent has 11 cards to our 15. Is there time today? Uh, there is, uh, well, it depends. So we're supposed to be doing a team draft um, in like 30 minutes. So how long are you planning on being here today, Buckeye? If they don't have a removal for the Chaos Channeler, if it trades, I'm still happy, right? It replaces itself and gives us two more cards. Okay, so let's do your deck the moment that the thing is over, the team draft. They usually last about an hour or two. Ooh, I cut my, my neg 11, neg, neg, neg 11, neg 11 option here. Fudge Sickles, I don't have a sack outlet though. Oh, I'll probably draw one. There's two sack outlets in my deck and we get to draw two cards. What do you guys think? We fucking run it? <laughs> it has trample? No, it doesn't. Oh, it does have trample. What? How does that have trample? I thought this set had no trample. <laughs> oh my God, I thought this set had no trample. Oh my God. Okay. I we. We probably would have drawn a sack outlet anyway. There was two in the top 14 cards. All right, before we get to the rest of the gameplay highlights, I'd like to take a minute to thank Cuba Majigs for sponsoring this video. Cuba Majigs are reusable booster boxes. These small boxes are uniquely designed for storing your cubes, so they're always ready to draft. But in all honesty, there's so much more than that. I like to use them to keep my cards organized and protected. I like to use them to separate my sideboard and tokens from the rest of my deck. I also use them to keep the more expensive cards separated so that they don't get damaged or mixed up with the rest of my cards. Cuba Majigs can hold up to 15 double sleeve cards as well as 30 unsleeve cards. They're compatible with all standard TCG games and they fit into most deck boxes. The Cuba Majigs come pre-built in their own matching storage boxes. These boxes can fit 400 cards on their own if you want to use them as storage separately. There are over 30 gorgeous pieces of art designed specifically for this project and created by many of your favorite magic artists. This extremely versatile product already has almost 3,000 backers. Before time runs out, guys, make sure you guys click the link in the description below to head on over to the Cuba Majigs Kickstarter page. This page is going to show you everything you guys need to know about the Kickstarter and all the extra loot you guys can get for being a part of it. All right, we've taken care of that, so let's go ahead and get back to the gameplay. I thought you were going to not take it. I was I was going to take it no matter what, but I was debating whether or not I needed to hold anything else back. I mean, we're on the draw. I'm greedy. This is probably awful, but whatever. <laughs> We're on the draw, it's okay. What could go wrong? Other than not drawing other lands. We're gonna keep any two lander, right? If we have like a shambling geist, we're happy with this hand. We've got two of the sack outlets on two, which just make this an amazing three drop on the draw. 
Gives us three draws to find one of our sack outlets, even if we don't hit the other land for a few turns. Grab dinner before the team draft. Sounds good, hun. Starts in about 20 minutes if we can find enough players. Tiger Sack Outlet, let's hope. That would be cool. Okay, they can't tap. So I'm gonna steal this. Oh, wrong, wrong one. They can't attack, so we're going to steal this. Hopefully we hit land here. No land? That's annoying. Got it. Still awkward that, you know, we couldn't uh, couldn't make that happen, but... Ninja Penguin, how are you doing, hun? Welcome, welcome. Losing a price makes me sad, but, you know... Okay, let's go here so we have some so we can be aggressive. Because we have a sack outlet in our hand that we have enough mana for. So I'm happy to not ask the cat. Go be a little bit more aggressive here with the ghoul. Also helps us play around like a fight spell here. If they are trying to kill our ghoul that way, we can sack in response. If it's the spoils, because they have no treasures. Opponent might not might regret not killing the ghoul. Yes and no, the tribal hunter and the deadly dispute are both sack outlets that we can pay for. Oh my gosh. 
What in the Jiminy Christmas is that? Oh my gosh. Can we steal it? Draw and sack in response? So we're gonna pay, pay and pay. We're going to go to damage. We're going to attack them. Eight. They killed this. Eight. Yeah. You have to block this. I should just throw it at them and kill them, but that sounds way less fun. No, I want to sack it. I'm just going to let him block. <laughs> I'm a troll. Okay. Full control. Draw seven. Auto pay. In response. Back it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey YouTube, I'm gonna probably put this up there. Hope you're enjoying the video. So this is the same problem we had before where we have the price of loyalty, a sack outlet, we're on the draw, we've got mana. We just gotta draw a curve, which is sometimes easier said than done. On the draw, like I'll almost never throw back three lands with every cut with both colors or whatever. That's just too hard to do. Okay, well, this is unfortunate to be sure. I think they missed a land drop. So if they miss the land drop again and don't have a dragon fire, we're still in this? Teleportation circle, interesting. They're gonna get to scry a bunch, which is nice. It didn't ask me to pick a creature. Normally it does that first. That was weird. Oh! Spicy, spicy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Nice draw, nice draw. 20, that seems like a great number. They 
They have so many goblins. Holy shit. Maybe I should have made it with treasure. I kind of thought they would chump it, but I guess not. So ate up most of their goblins, which is good. Let's hope they don't have another goblin ETB trigger here for the teleportation circle. They don't. I'm guessing they're holding open a counter spell. Or some sort of removal is my other guess. I have a feeling it gets countered. Annoying, but certainly could be worse. That's unfortunate. I want to cast the channeler more because I want to draw the cards. Like the sack is good, but yeah, teleportation circle on the goblins is pretty nuts. Roll high, roll high. Okay, that's a good low roll. Roll this one high. Yes, we did it. Go us. Okay. They shouldn't have any answers, which I'm happy about. All right, doing the stuff. Trap coming in handy against a 5-5 flying dragon. We would have probably never gotten through otherwise. Love to see it. This deck is, <laughs> this deck is a blast to play. I just gotta, gotta put that out there. It, it makes my heart grow two sizes. I'd like to give a special thank you to those of you who have signed up for our Patreon. I couldn't make this content without you. Also to Cool Stuff Inc. and KMC Sleeves for supporting the channel as well. Definitely check them out and use our discount codes to support the channel.